Another special factor coverage, the death of Osama bin Laden. Joining us from Washington, New York Congressman Peter King, head of the House Homeland Security Committee. So, Congressman, right off the bat, tell me something I don't know. Tell us something we don't know. Well, I don't know if everyone knows this or not, but uh, you mentioned the fact that uh, we obtained information several years ago, vital information about the courier for Obama. We obtained that information through waterboarding. And uh, so for those who say that waterboarding doesn't work, to say that it should be stopped and never used again, we got vital information which uh, directly led us to bin Laden. Wow. Also, wait, wait, let me stop you there. I did not know that, and I'm sure most of my audience did not at all. Explain how that went down. How did we get that information? Where did it come from? Was it Guantanamo Bay? It came from uh, an overseas uh, prison where Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was being interrogated and a waterboarding was used and it was during the interroga interrogation of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed uh, through waterboarding that this information so, was so learned. So KSM gave it up? Mohammed himself gave it up? KSM gave us the first lead, and then later on, Alibi, who also was a top aide to uh, bin Laden, he was also uh, being interrogated uh, with uh, strong interrogation measures, and he confirmed information about the courier. So, key information we got on a very, very vital that, part. That is absolutely fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. You're not going to hear that on the other networks, I guarantee you. Yeah. Now, also, Bill, I can tell you, I've spoken to people who've seen the pictures of bin Laden, and I wouldn't be surprised if these are made public, because even though he was shot in the face, the wound is not not that bad, so it's not going to be scaring people off, and there's not a reason not to yeah, show it. Yeah, they'll have to so put them out there, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, because you have these crazy conspiratorialists and all of right. that. Now, um, so they, they waterboard these guys, and they get the name of a, one of bin Laden's couriers, all right? So they, they he goes on the uh, wanted list, and he goes on to let's find out, and they spot him in Pakistan, and then they follow him around for a couple of years, and he leads him to this compound. Now, let's, let's fast forward up to this weekend. Are you insulted that you didn't know anything about this? Because not only did President Obama not tell the Pakistani authorities, he didn't tell Congress anything about it either. Was that a good move? Yes, it was. I think uh, the less people know about these, the better. Now, I was told an hour and a half before the president went on television, I was the only members of, uh, members of Congress who was advised of that. No, Bill, because if he tells me, he has to tell others. And uh, once that's out there, I mean, you saw yesterday, last night, a very few members of Congress were informed, very small number, were informed about 60 minutes to an hour and a half before uh, the president spoke on television. That was all over television within, you know, within that first hour, it was already being leaked that it was uh, bin Laden who was killed. We were told that under strict confidence, and yet it got out. No, we can't compromise uh, uh, missions. I have no problem with this at all. Now, it's possible the speaker knew. It's possible maybe the chairman of the Intelligence Committee knew. But no, uh, I, I'm not one of these people. My ego is not hurt. Uh, I was told before the president spoke. I'll be actually uh, with the president tonight. So, no, I, uh, I, I am I mean, I, And I kind of agree with you. I mean, yeah. I, I think that, that any kind of uh, news like this, and, and remember, Remember, I don't think people understand. I did this in, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan when I, when I went over there. Obama and his national security team were actually sitting in the White House watching this go, thing right. go down. They couldn't go into the compound. You can't set up those kinds of shots. But they saw the choppers right. go in and all that sort of flying, so they're watching it go down. But here's something really interesting. On Saturday night, I talked to Leon Panetta, the CIA chief. Now, Panetta, I got to tell you, he was, you know, at the, at the correspondence dinner. He's having a good time. He's this and that. He's yucking it up with me. I've known him forever. Da, 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 da. These guys are the best actors of all time. Uh, the president gets up there, does a little monologue, and he's making fun of everybody. He's having a great old time. And you would never know, never know that the operation was scheduled for that day, Saturday. I mean, these guys were unbelievable actors. Yeah, well, listen, uh, compartmentalization is very important, and this is what you have to do. I mean, you cannot, you cannot be putting your heart on your sleeve. You can't be engaging in psychobabble and letting the whole world know what agony you're going through. And that's why I think it's really wrong, whether it's Democrats or Republicans, when they go out of their way to take cheap personal shots at a president. It's, it's okay to criticize his policies, but they are going through incredible stress and strain at all times. And one small mistake, I mean, just think... If the president had made the wrong decision when he okayed this, uh, this mission, you could have had civilians killed, you could have had Navy SEALs wiped out, you could have had an oh, international disaster. Oh, it was a daring disaster. mission, very complicated Absolutely. mission. Now, you, this, your committee this week is holding hearings on Pakistan. Now, am I wrong what I just said in the Talking Points memo? I, we, those people, you can't trust those people over there. Some of them like us and help us, but, but there's no way that the president could have called the president of Pakistan no. and said, you know, we're coming in. No way on earth that could have happened. 
Oh, Bill Clinton did the right thing in, uh, in 1998 when he told Pakistan that he was going to fire rockets over their country to get bin Laden. And, they, and the ISI, the Pakistani Intelligence Agency, tipped off bin Laden. We can't make that mistake again. Uh, Pakistan is complicated, but you're right. The bottom line is, as a government, they cannot be trusted. There are some people you can, others you can't. But when it comes to American lives and American death, we don't have the luxury. We don't have the luxury of hoping that the person we give the information to is going to be on our sure, side. Sure, especially so because it took the right four thing. years to track this guy into this hat. And, and, and it was 100 yards away from a Pakistani military base. We're going to get to that in a moment. All right, uh, Congressman, we appreciate your, uh, and it's really a blockbuster headline about that waterboarding stuff. Very interesting. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Directly, Bill. Right, Fox News alert right now as we continue to get word from the White House now about this relationship between the U.S. and Pakistan. And did Islamabad know? It was giving shelter to the world's most wanted man. Here's John Brennan, runs the White House Counterterrorism Unit, says it's something they are looking into and have not dismissed. I think it's inconceivable that uh, bin Laden did not have a support system in the country that allowed him to remain there for an extended period of time. Uh, I am not going to speculate about what type of support he might have had on an official basis. Uh, in, inside of Pakistan. Uh, we, we are closely talking to the Pakistanis right now. And again, we are uh, leaving open uh, opportunities to continue to uh, uh, pursue whatever leads might be out there. I want to get direct reaction now. New York Congressman Peter King, Republican Chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee. And, sir, good morning to you. And uh, thank morning, you for your time. What, what do you think about that position right now with Pakistan? What, what, what are we to understand and make of it, sir? Well, Bill, I'll actually be meeting behind closed doors in my office today with the uh, uh, Pakistani ambassador. These are the most serious questions that bin Laden could have been living in that mansion, in that structure, for six years we believe he was there. That was an outside structure. It was different from all the other buildings in that area. It's right near the Pakistani military academy, right near an intelligence headquarters. There are many retired military and intelligence officials living all around that mansion. So you're, you're, you're mansion, casting yeah. suspicion then. You, you, you sound like you don't believe the Pakistanis. No, I believe that somebody in their government, somebody in their structure, somebody in the intelligence apparatus, the military apparatus, had to know that bin Laden was there and had to be uh, providing some support for him. It's impossible to believe that with the sophisticated intelligence agency and military apparatus that Pakistan has, that they could have the most notorious criminal in the world living in plain sight right now, in front of them I, I, and not you, know about it. You know the president, right, Zadari? Yes, well, uh, I've you, met him, yes. You've met him, right? You don't know him well, though. He, he wrote in the Washington Post today. He wrote a lot, by the way, in this op-ed. Uh, here is just one line. Such baseless speculation may make exciting cable news, but it does not reflect fact. Well, let me tell you where President Zadari is really hurting himself there. This isn't just uh, cable news. It's not just me. I can tell you, I've spoken to people in the highest levels of our government, and they are extremely concerned. And Pakistan should also realize that many members in Congress are raising serious uh, questions. Why should we be giving three billion dollars a year to Pakistan if they can't capture the most, uh, the world's most notorious terrorists living right in their midst? Now, I believe we have to maintain a relationship with Pakistan. I want to do it, but it's becoming harder and harder to uh, continue it under these circumstances because I don't know of anyone in the administration who believes what President Zadari is saying. Well, Zadari had his wife killed by terrorists. I mean, if, if anyone understands the threat of terrorism, it would be him. It's affected uh, his family and changed his life. Benazir Bhutto was assassinated, but the fact is Zadari, uh, in many ways, is not even a serious player in uh, Pakistan today. Basically, it's the military and the ISI, it's the, the intelligence military and the intelligence agency. agency yeah. right. uh, I want to get to two other topics quickly here. C can yeah. you say again what you told Bill O'Reilly last night based on fact? that the information on this courier that led the Navy SEALs to Osama bin Laden was gained through intelligence that was gathered by waterboarding? Do you stand the by initial, that? Yes, the initial uh, information on the courier was obtained by waterboarding back in 2003. That's when this person first came on the radar screen. Without that information that it was obtained by uh, waterboarding, they would not be aware of this courier, and not just from uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who was waterboarded, but also interrogation of Alibi, who was captured later. He well, also now, provided just additional information. Now, let stop one moment. Donald Rumsfeld did an interview yesterday and said that's not true. It did not well, come from waterboarding. Well, I can tell you that I've spoken to people who are very familiar with the situation, uh, who are in the intelligence community at that time. They brought this to my attention. They were there. They have first-hand information. They, uh, they have access 
No reflection of Don Rumsfeld, who I have a great respect for, but uh, I'm telling you that people who are on the ground, people who are in a position to know, they told me that. Okay. On the photos, do you expect them to be released? Because the suggestion I heard from you earlier was that it's not as graphic or perhaps as gruesome as many might think. Now, now do you have that on good fact? Yes, I've spoken to people who have seen the photos. They say that while you do see the bullet wound in the face and there's a certain swelling of the face, it is not a uh, horribly gross photo. But you have not seen them. Friend people. I know, I have not. And I said that last night. I, I have not seen it, but I've spoken to people who have seen it, and they, they told me that it's not that bad. Uh, and that I just, also from what I understand, I believe the photo will be released of, of his face, yes. Okay, and possibly even today. I mean, there is some speculation that the mm -hmm. debate continues and perhaps it comes at any moment. Uh, we'll yeah, I, I can't say on that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Peter King, thank you. We'll speak very soon again, all right? Thank you for your no, time. Thank you. On the Hill. Thank you. Allison. All right, well,